What's going on guys? So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you my experience of being a digital nomad in Playa del Carmen. I stayed there for two months, but I initially only wanted to come for two weeks, but I ended up loving it so much that I actually canceled my flight back to the US and I ended up extending my trip and stayed in Playa for a little bit longer. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is outline exactly why I stayed, my favorite parts about Playa, and some of the stuff that I didn't like, and some stuff that you should watch out for as well. All right, so let's start with the top five things that I really, really enjoyed about Playa for digital nomads, experiences that I enjoyed, things that I did, and just overall my favorite stuff about Playa. And then after that, we'll talk about some of the things that I didn't like, and it really shouldn't stop you from going, but these are a few things that you should watch out for. All right, so the first thing, and by the way, these are in no particular order. These are just five of my favorite things. But the first thing that I really, really liked is the people. The people that I met in Playa are absolutely amazing. And this is kind of true, I think, overall with most of the, the travel or kind of the digital nomad community. But specifically in Playa, also I spent a little bit of time in Tulum. But the people that I met are absolutely amazing. If you're a digital nomad like me and you were also working and traveling, then you are going to meet some amazing people in things like co-working spaces or in things like gyms. And if you, if you speak English, you don't speak much Spanish like I do, then you are going to meet some amazing people. Even if you speak a different language, you know, there's people from all over the world that are there and they're super cool, they're driven, they're ambitious. I met a lot of influencers both on YouTube, on things like Instagram. I met some companies that, or some people that do e-commerce stores, some people that run digital marketing agencies, some, you know, bloggers, all of the normal, typical stuff that you would expect in a digital nomad type community. But the people are, are super nice. Everybody's always down for an adventure and they're also just amazing people to have long conversations with that are deep and meaningful. And the cool thing about it is that they do a lot of traveling as well. And you guys could compare notes. You can talk about different travel stories and just make a whole lot of new memories as well. So one thing that I did differently was I actually signed up for a Muay Thai gym and that's like kickboxing for those of you that don't really know what that is and I met some amazing friends there and we ended up hanging out a whole bunch um, outside of the gym but the people that I met there were absolutely amazing as well and I was training there like um, between three to four times a week and I was doing this after, after working at my co-working space and it was just absolutely amazing. I had a really good time. If you're into boxing, if you're into that sort of thing, then I'm gonna leave a link to the gym as well in the description. Highly recommend that you check it out. But the friends that I made there were amazing. A lot of them are also working and we just had so much in common. The other thing that I think I did that was different than most people is I actually went out of my way to also meet people in random events or, or gatherings. And some of these people were locals that lived there. Uh, some were expats that lived there. But overall, I just went out of my way to meet people and just introduce myself to random individuals or just in general people that uh, looked like they were doing something interesting. And the reason that I put this as my first item here is because I did a few things kind of solo. And one thing that I actually realized pretty early on is actually if you go about doing things solo, it definitely can work and you can meet people while you're doing it. But it's, it's, it's not as fun as if you, if you have friends, right? Whether you meet the friends at a gym or you meet them at a co-working spot or maybe you meet them doing the activity, but just in general, having someone to talk to, having someone to share that experience with is going to make your adventure more fun. And that's a realization that I had. There were a few times that I wanted to just, you know, walk along the beach and, um, and go to like a party and I would do these things solo, but I always ended up um, finding myself, you know, making friends there and then, um, and then 
you know, hitting up those friends later on as well to do more events and, and all that good stuff. So definitely make sure that you are meeting new people and you are talking to everybody. It seems like most people have a pretty interesting story um, that you can, you can talk about, you can learn from, and then also you'll have friends to go on adventures with. And they'll probably have ideas on stuff that they wanna do as well, and then you can join and it'll be, it'll be awesome. The second big thing about Playa del Carmen is that there is always something to do. There's always something going on, whether you want to go and rent a yacht or just go on a catamaran with a whole bunch of other people. You can always do that pretty much every single day as long as the weather allows it. Or if you want to hang out by the beach, then there's always stuff going on there. There's always people that are hanging out, lounging. There's always events that you can go to. There's always you know, some type of dance event or uh, you, can, you can go dance salsa. You're staying at a hostel. And I did stay at a hostel briefly, but then I actually ended up getting an apartment because it was uh, cheaper. And then also I had my own place and all that. And as, as you guys know, I was working as well, so I needed my, my own space where I could do calls and all that good stuff. So if you stay at a hostel, you will get a ton of ideas on stuff that you can do, and you'll also meet a ton of people that you can do them with. But the cool thing about staying in a hostel is they have their own events as well. And so this could be midday, it could be 1 p.m., right? It could be uh, 11 a.m., it could be uh, also later on in the day. No matter at, at what point, if you're free, there's probably something going on or there's somebody in that hostel that's doing something cool and exciting and they'll invite you and then you guys can go do that thing together. Everything from being out on the water. A really popular thing that you can do in Playa is going to the cenotes. There's really so many around Playa and Tulum that you can go and you can check out and they're all relatively close. If you jump on a bus or on a colectivo, which is like their, their local transport, you can get to really anywhere that you need to get to. And these cenotes are super fun. There's always a lot of people there um, and you can go and you can check them out and it will be a, a good time. And you can go swimming, you can uh, take a break from the heat and just overall have a really good time. The third amazing thing that I really liked about Playa, and you probably already know this just about Mexico as a whole, but it's the prices and then overall the accessibility that you have by staying in Playa. So if you stay by Fifth Avenue, the prices are going to be slightly higher, but still nothing crazy. But if you stay by Fifth, and it's a little bit closer to, let's say like 10th Street, then you're not gonna be directly on the main road, but you'll be close enough to do all the activities, whether it's you wanna go to a bar and have a drink, or some of the really good food places, or the ocean, it's all right there, and even if you stay a few streets away from that, it's very easy to walk there, and you can essentially walk anywhere, okay? So the further that you get from 5th Street, the cheaper that it's going to be, food-wise. Right, food wise, as well as other activities, which again is a blessing and a curse because if you stay too far, then you'll have to take a taxi to get to Fifth Avenue where all the events are happening and all the, all the action is. But if you don't wanna be in all that crazy busyness, then stay a little bit away and you'll be happy, everything will be, will be cheaper and just make sure that it's a, it's a safe area by, if you're staying in an Airbnb, then definitely look at the reviews and make sure that you are you are all good, the area's good, no one has reported that they got robbed or anything like that. But anyways, we'll cover that towards the end of the video um, in terms of some safety tips. But if you stay by Fifth Avenue, you will be good, the prices will be good, and you'll, you'll never run out of things to do because really, there's just so much stuff going on there. And that's also not to mention that if you do wanna go over to Tulum or if you wanna go over to Cancun, you can easily, easily do that. There is a bus, it's called the ADO bus, and it's something like 30 or 40 pesos. Uh, it's very, very cheap and it's about an hour drive, but it's, it's super cheap. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice bus and you can really get around anywhere. So if you wanna be in Tulum, you can do that. If you wanna be in Cancun, maybe you have an, an event there or like a snorkeling trip that you're going on, very easy to get to. You don't need to take the taxis, which will run you a, a much, much higher price point. Um, but overall, there are buses that leave like every 30 minutes, I believe, and you can get anywhere you want from Playa. 
For my fourth favorite thing about Playa, what I really like is the kindness of other people. And what I mean by that is the locals, they treat you very well, as well as the other travelers that are from non-US places uh, or people that just in general don't really speak English. My Spanish is not great. So people that don't really speak English, they know a few words, I know a few words of Spanish. They were still very, very open to helping me and just in general, making sure that I was happy and that I was satisfied. Now, some of these people are the people that are trying to sell you something, for example, a, a waiter or whatever, but other people are just random encounters, let's say in a mall or in a shopping store where they have nothing to gain, or just in general, just walking down the street. I met like a, like a fisherman at one point and he just started a conversation with me and he just wanted to know where I'm from and we basically just had a nice conversation and he told me about his fish that he likes to catch and his favorite fish and, and how he does it and his process and we just overall had a good conversation and it was, a, it was a good time. Everybody is super kind, super nice. I met a lot of people that were from places like Cuba, Argentina, Brazil, uh, just overall Latin America and these people were also extremely nice when we went out and we were just interacting with them. Everybody is very, very social. So I guess this kind of ties into the first point as well, which is the people are awesome. But overall, the locals want you there. They know that you are spending money with them. You are giving money to their economy and they like you being there overall. All right, and last but not least, the fifth thing that I love the most about Playa del Carmen, which is the vibe. The vibe of the city is amazing. It is a super fun place. It's a pretty modern-ish city, but it's also right next to the beach, and the beaches are pretty awesome. You can go and you can hang out there. There are beach clubs. There are basically anything that you could ever need is within walking distance. And this is amazing because, you know, as someone that lives in the US, you need to drive everywhere to get uh, to get to your destination. There, you can pretty much walk anywhere. If you live by fifth, you are good to go. And the cool thing about this city is that everywhere you go, people are pretty happy. People are enjoying themselves, people are having a good time, people are singing, people are dancing, and people overall just have a positive attitude. Now, I don't know if it's just the, the weather or maybe the fact that it's mainly tourists that are there and people are just on vacation, so they're just having a blast all the time, but there's just a lot of fun to be had there and that everybody is just in a, in a good mood, everybody's always looking to dance, and there's always music playing, and you'll hear a lot of positive things and stories from the people around you. And this is obviously very important. You wanna surround yourself with positive people, and this is definitely a city that has that. It has the right vibe, without a doubt. And overall, it just seems like everybody is a lighthearted there. It seems like no one's really taking life too seriously, and everybody's just living, and they're just trying to have a good time. All right, so now let's talk about some of the negative or kind of downsides of being in Playa or Tulum that I don't really see many people talk about and that I want to share with you guys and also just give you a heads up, give you a warning and just make sure that you are prepared for when this happens to you or if it happens to you, you'll know what to do, you'll know that this is normal and then you can, you can go from there and make the best decision possible. All right, so the first negative thing about Playa is the taxi drivers. Okay, the taxi drivers are great because they're everywhere, but the closer you are to Fifth Avenue, the more they're going to try to rip you off. These guys or girls will take as much money from you as possible. So definitely, definitely negotiate as much as you can because they will start off at a high price and if you're directly on Fifth, they'll start off with something crazy like, you know, I mean, I've heard 200 pesos, 150 pesos to you know drive like four minutes or something. And make sure that when you do deal with taxi drivers, you agree on the price before you get in their car. Do not get in the car, start driving, and then at your destination, they tell you the price. Because what they'll do is tell you some absurdly high price and then they'll guilt you into paying for it because they already did the trip. So make sure you agree on the price before you get in the car or another thing that you can do is you can tell them, hey, I just talked to a taxi driver back there and he told me it was gonna be this much. He said 60 pesos or he said 70 pesos and you're saying you wanna do it for 150 pesos. 
and you can try to negotiate that way but these taxi drivers trust me when I say they will take as much money as they can from you I've even heard that at a uh, at a resort nearby there was a, a girl who ended up paying $50 USD to drive it was like 10 minutes and that's insane even if you want to go from one side of Playa all the way to another you should be paying no more than a hundred pesos and I mean poor girl she paid fifty dollars to drive you know from one side to the other she just didn't know any better and I've even heard about somebody that from the airport and that's where they charge you the most so definitely if you're coming in from the airport take the ADO bus or take a collectivo that is my best suggestion and then if you want you could take a taxi from the station to where you're staying which is a hostel uh, or an Airbnb whatever it may be but anyways a taxi driver you know can charge you something crazy fifty dollars a hundred dollars two hundred dollars I've heard people paying these prices to drive in a taxi when you could just pay 60 pesos or 70 pesos which is only like a few dollars so definitely be aware of this and do not overpay on these taxi drivers the second downside which is a pretty big downside is that when you walk up and down fifth maybe some of the other streets too but especially on fifth avenue people are going to be offering you drugs okay now nowhere else have i gone that people have offered me drugs as much as hanging out on on fifth avenue now i don't do that sort of stuff but the anywhere you walk they're you know they're trying to whisper in your ear they're trying to say hey do you want this hey do you want that and they're really trying hard to sell you some sort of drug and I mean the same guys right I was there for two months and I would see the same guys and they would come up and talk to me they would come up and talk to me come up and talk to me day in and day out and I'm like dude I don't do that you know and I would even tell them and they all speak English so they knew what I was saying but they would they would still come up to me almost harass me and basically what you would have to do is just tell them no you're not interested or don't even make eye contact and just keep walking forward you'll be okay it's really not it's really not a big deal you just have to tell them hey no I'm good thanks and then just keep walking but it does get a bit annoying it does get a bit tedious when they just keep asking you I mean if you walk from one side to the other I mean I would have like five or six plus people that are offering to sell me this kind of thing and it's it's, it's a bit annoying when you're walking up and down it you know daily and a good way that you can actually avoid this kind of thing is by traveling in groups. So making friends either at a hostel or some other event and then traveling with those friends, making sure you're all on the same page and then traveling with them as, as a group is generally going to be more safer than if it's just one or two people and then you can be safer. You guys can look out for one another and you can also have a lot of fun because you're together. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. I hope that you found it beneficial. If you are planning to go to Playa or you're in Playa or you've been to Playa, go ahead and leave a comment below this video with your thoughts on it. Or maybe if you haven't gone, leave some of your fears down below. And what I could do is jump in on the conversation or maybe somebody else can that's been there and we could talk about it that way. Uh, overall, I had an absolutely amazing experience, everything from co-working to making a whole bunch of new friends to having some amazing, amazing experiences as well. And without even really uh, having this as my intention, I actually learned quite a lot, uh, like you know, business-wise and freelance-wise, also from hanging out other successful people that are traveling, that are working, and that are doing their thing and growing a brand. So overall, if you found this video helpful, go ahead, leave a comment and let me know. Go ahead and click subscribe for more videos that are like this and I will see you soon.